Workaholism is killing you, and hustle culture is shortening everybody's lifespan. You would think this is a generally accepted belief that can't possibly offend anyone, but workaholics will get really mad at you when you say stuff like this. They consider quiet quitting, being lazy, and will start attacking anyone who doesn't agree that you should be working impossible hours if you want your life to amount to anything. As a former workaholic, I understand where they're coming from. In this video, I want to share what they don't tell you about what happens when you stop being a workaholic. So first, let me paint you a picture of the kind of workaholic I was. Starting from first grade to middle school, my parents put me in an after-school program that forced me to study an extra three hours every single day. I would come home at 6 p.m. and do extra homework for the next three hours until I went to bed. For summer vacations, I didn't really have summer vacations because I was sent to summer school and was forced to study all summer long. And that was every single year throughout my entire grade school experience. I went to a high school that had particularly high achieving students, so I took advanced placement and honors classes just so I could be considered of average intelligence compared to my classmates. By my senior year of high school, I was taking seven classes instead of the five to six classes that people normally take, one of them being yearbook, so I would skip my lunches just so I can finish designing my yearbook spreads. Immediately after school, I would rush to my part-time job at the mall, and then immediately after that, I would go to my local community college because I was taking nighttime classes from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. I would come home and do homework from 10 p.m. to about 12 p.m. sometimes later and if I had time I would also be working on my art portfolio to apply to colleges. And then in college I started sleeping on average four hours a night and pulling around one to two all-nighters per week. I did this because I wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna come to class one of the worst students and artists in the class. I don't say any of this to brag. I'm sure there were a lot of people who worked a lot harder than me and had a lot less opportunities than me growing up. I actually look back on all of this with a lot of regret because looking back, a lot of it was voluntary at a certain point. No one was really forcing me to do this in high school in particular. It was just this weird need for me to prove to everybody that I was smart enough or hardworking enough. This compulsive behavior that I had developed continued even when I broke into Hollywood. It was like all the habits I developed in childhood made it impossible for me to stop working. During every single waking hour that I wasn't working, I was focusing on my side hustle instead. On the weekends, I'd be tabling at conventions, which usually started at 5 a.m. for me and then lasted to about 10 p.m. So my real work hours looked more like 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week with no vacations for several years. I chose to never take my yearly two-week vacations because at the time, I would have rather just gotten paid. I had developed a huge money-saving problem that came from developing pretty severe financial anxiety. Naturally, I couldn't continue at this pace, not without health problems starting to come about as I got older. The first instance of this was in high school where it was the very first time I fainted from exhaustion. I didn't pay any attention to it because I knew I needed to do what I needed to do in order to get into my dream art colleges. So by college and when I started working, fainting spells became pretty normal for me. It was in college when I started having heart palpitations from stress and anxiety dreams. And then when I started working, I was developing physical illnesses that were unexplained, specifically nausea. I would go to work and just randomly get nausea out of nowhere. Sometimes, I would literally puke. I would have to get sent home from the work because I thought I had the flu, but there really were no other flu symptoms. My body was just quitting on me. This all culminated into complete and utter burnout once I started experiencing depression symptoms from the toxic work environment in the industry. A quick explanation of what those are in case you're experiencing them. I was experiencing anhedonia, which is sudden loss of interest in your hobbies, all the things that you normally enjoy doing, you're just completely apathetic. You can't focus changes in eating patterns, whether you're eating too much or you completely lose your appetite. You feel weak or exhausted for no reason. I would wake up having enough sleep, but I just could not get out of bed. Feeling overwhelmed and guilty for being this way, feeling like you're inadequate or not worth anything. I felt intense anxiety about the future, about money, and crying for no reason. 
So technically, I did feel upset, but there wasn't a logical reason for it. It was more like a way to cope with how stressed out and anxious I was. And it's not like if you have any one of these symptoms, you have depression. It was the fact that I was experiencing all of them. And you know, my workaholism served me pretty well up until then. It helped me do well in school while also having the time to pursue having a career in the arts. It helped me get into a good college and obtain a pretty sought after career in Hollywood. It helped me earn money and make a pretty decent life for myself at what most people would consider a pretty young age. So because of that, I still didn't realize that it was my addiction to work that was causing my physical and mental health issues. So when I quit my job at Disney to focus on my small business, I pushed myself to work even harder to pump out three videos a week on my YouTube channel. I was filming, editing, writing constantly while also somehow managing to manage my online art business. So instead of working less when I quit, I was now working more than ever. Plus it didn't help to have what seemed like the entire animation industry and art community watching me and secretly wishing for me to fuck up because because they want to relish in it. It's actually been that kind of pressure that has always fueled my workaholism to the max. My brain goes, I will kill myself just to prove you all wrong. Don't test me. I've learned the dangerous skill of being able to push past all of my limits in college. But then something happened that kind of broke something in my mind. I've been canceled a few times for some of the things I say on this channel. People don't really like it when I speak my mind. It happened a lot more frequently when I used to post more art-related content. A warning to anyone who wants to post art-related content, the art community is a particularly toxic and sensitive place. They will cancel you for imaginary offenses that they've made up in their own minds. I've been on the internet long enough to understand that it doesn't really matter what you actually did. The internet just likes to bring people up just so they can tear them down for entertainment's sake. And this time, it might just be your turn. During one such cancellation, I was wondering why I was working so hard to create videos to help the art community when they hate me so much. That kind of led me down the rabbit hole of thinking, why was I working so hard, period? I kind of was thinking about my entire life until that point. What did I gain from all my hard work exactly? I resented my ex-career. I didn't really have any friends. I gained health problems and depression. Sure, I could afford a lot of things and I could provide shelter for myself, but was that really worth all that effort? The only thing I gained was the ability to work so that I can fund a sad, miserable life in LA. I wake up to work so I can make money so that I can sleep in an overpriced city that hates me so that I can wake up and do it again the next day. I felt like my attempts to be of value to the world was kind of pointless. Eventually, it led me to this really depressing thought. I thought if I were to die tomorrow, I would have never really known what it meant to live a meaningful life. I wanted desperately to figure out what that even means. What does it mean to live a meaningful life? I had no idea where to start, but I knew I had to make huge changes to my life. The first thing that needed to go was LA. It was way too expensive, which contributed to my financial anxiety, which was the reason why I needed to work excessively. It also held way too much baggage for me and just no longer provided the joy that I wanted in a home. It took about a year of proper research and preparation, but we eventually left LA and moved to a small town in Arizona. When we first moved here, I loved how peaceful our new home was. I was basically being forced to slow down for the first time in my entire life. I couldn't work as much as I would want to force myself to because of the inconvenience of living in a small town. Amazon packages take longer to ship out. I can't just go to the store and buy whatever I needed because the nearest hardware store is 30 minutes away. This would cause interruptions in my filming schedule, so I couldn't upload every single week. A a lot of the times when it would snow, I'd be forced to stop working and use that time to relax. I didn't realize it when I left LA, but I unintentionally adopted a slow living lifestyle. Because small chores take longer to do, you're forced to pay attention to the world around you. 
I started noticing how beautiful the sky looked and how clear the air smelled after it would rain. I know it sounds kind of stupid. I know it sounds kind of overly romantic. The common criticism here would be, are you dumb? Of course, I've noticed things like that. And yes, technically I've noticed these things before, but I didn't appreciate them until this point. And that leads me to the first problem you're going to encounter when you stop being a workaholic. When you transition from being a workaholic to a slow living lifestyle in a pretty drastically short time frame, you induce existential dread in yourself. I think that's why wealthy tech CEOs like to go to retreats where they go back to nature or go to Burning Man and really find themselves or take hallucinatory drugs or something. You're going to feel extremely distressing emotions that are very, very difficult to overcome. But if you do get to the other side of them, you come out a much stronger person. For me, I felt such an intense amount of gratitude that can only happen if you realize that you didn't really feel grateful for your life before. I realized that I was so busy working my entire life, I never really stopped to enjoy very simple things like how beautiful the weather is. I had to admit to myself that I willingly just worked and let so much time pass me by and I didn't even know it. I didn't really even care. And it made me feel like I wasted my entire life up until this point, up until I became 30 essentially, before I truly started to live the way I, I wanted to. I felt guilty for being a workaholic. I was so angry at myself that I was the kind of person that wanted success so badly, I was willing to throw away entire years of my life to work. Then came the fear. I have an irrational fear that I'm going to die at any moment. I think it's a pretty common fear that most artists have for some reason. It basically makes me hyper aware that tomorrow is not guaranteed. I am aware that 30 years old is still pretty young. That being said, I don't know for sure that I'm going to live till 31. I don't even know if I'm going to live till tomorrow. This crazy windstorm that's happening outside right now could knock down a tree right this second. I could be gone just like that. I felt like because I was so ungrateful for my life before, that I don't deserve how great it is now. All of this results in me feeling these intensely negative emotions at random moments of the day. I'd be renovating the floors and all of a sudden I would feel all this fear sweep over me for absolutely no reason. Painting the walls would make me feel overwhelmed and then I'd feel frustrated for me be feeling overwhelmed. Me being hyper self-sufficient made all these feelings worse because how dare I let something like emotions get in the way of my productivity. Being alone in my thoughts like this was really painful, but it forced me to confront the real reason for my workaholism. I couldn't blame the toxic work culture in Hollywood anymore. I couldn't blame LA and how expensive and difficult it was for me to live there. I couldn't blame politics and how frustrated it would make me. But I also couldn't keep blaming myself for the workaholism that became my identity. There were very good reasons why I became a workaholic, I thought. It's technically what I needed to do in order to survive growing up. I, as a child, was coping the only way I knew how in such a competitive academic environment. It was the only way of getting an ounce of what you might call validation from my parents. It was the only way I knew how to prove to others that I was good enough, successful enough, worthy enough in my career, and as a result in my life, since my career was my life. But this intense work ethic that had served me oh so well throughout my life has stopped helping me a long time ago. Instead of being that helpful friend that protects me from the consequences of failure, it started controlling me instead. It made me behave poorly to other people and especially myself. Clearly, it gave me health problems. So as much as I appreciated my workaholic tendencies, I had to tell it to give me back control of the wheel. So instead of punishing myself for constantly chasing after validation for most of my adult life, I started giving myself the kindness that I thought I needed from others. I realized that no amount of other people telling me that I'm enough was ever going to satisfy anything in myself. I needed to hear that from myself and only myself. This mindset change didn't happen overnight. The feeling of dread that I described still haunted me 
pretty much constantly but it was slowly starting to go away to the point where I started to actually enjoy the menial labor that comes with renovating a home. I knew things were really starting to change for me when I would wake up in the morning with this burning desire to get the day started, trudge through the snow so that I can get supplies at the hardware store. Before I would wake up numb to life, I'd want to find an excuse to continue to live. Now I feel genuine excitement to get up every single day. When I do work now, it is 100% for myself. For me, that means making these YouTube videos that share my experience. It means making this home my dream creative space where I can be truly free. Even if other people think what I do is silly. Even if I will be mocked for the rest of my life for giving up a career some people would die to have. Even if I never make the kind of money I used to make. Even if at the end of the day, I'm an insignificant speck in the universe. This is what makes me feel like my life is worth living.